Good morning and a joyful Resurrection Sunday to you because Christ has risen indeed. He has risen from the dead. And we're here this morning in Jerusalem Baptist Church to celebrate the mighty resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want to read some scriptures to you this morning from the Gospel of St. Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 28, starting at verse 1. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him, and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And may the Lord add a rich blessing to his word today on this Resurrection Sunday. And i got to be honest, I love the Resurrection Sunday of Jesus. I love the Resurrection of Christ our Lord. And we no longer have to sit under a Bodhi tree to open the doors of perception, to seek some quasi-enlightenment. The fact is, Jesus has risen from the dead, my friends, and he has proved himself with many infallible proofs to many. And it fills my heart with light and with much joy to know Jesus has risen from the dead. And when he rose, it filled all of the realms of glory with great praise, with great adoration <coughs> and great worship. Now naturally, because Jesus has risen from the dead, it caused the religious leaders of the day some great problems. It caused the Romans who worshipped the sun god, Sol, great problems because the Son of God had risen from the dead. As the Romans, they had a false god for every day of the week. The days of the week, Monday all the way to Saturday and Sunday, are all named after the Roman gods. But on Sunday, it's when our Lord rose from the dead. The Resurrection Sunday has got nothing to do with Easter. The Anglo-Saxon name for, for, for the goddess of spring and fertility, where we get all the Easter bunnies and Easter eggs from. The Resurrection Sunday is about the risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has come back from the dead. The king of death had been conquered. Jesus is alive. Alleluia. After the Sabbath, the first day of the week, Jesus rose again. And the two Marys were free after the Sabbath to walk to the tomb again to, to, to anoint the body of Christ. Hence, as soon as it is dawn, as it's daybreak, they're heading out of the door. They've got everything that they need and they're heading to the tomb of Jesus. They're in grief. They're in great perplexity. They're in great sorrow. But they are keen to get to the tomb. And when they get to the tomb, there is an almighty great earthquake. Because an angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and rolled the stone back and sat on the top of it. 
Luke 24, 2, tells us that two angels appeared. This is a supernatural event. The two Marys see two angels on an assignment from heaven. And one of the angels has just rolled a two-ton stone back up the slope. That's like lifting one black rhinoceros or two hippopotamuses. I mean, you need some incredible strength to lift these guys up. You need supernatural strength to move a two-ton stone back up the slope. No wonder the angel sat down on top of it. You know, no wonder as well. These guards were in complete shock, complete fear, and they become like dead men. They just seen and, and heard this incredible earthquake. The ground had shaken underneath them. Then they saw a two-ton stone being rolled back up the slope. And they'd seen the glory of two angels. As the angels' appearance was like lightning. Their clothes was like snow. These angels had rays of light shining out of them, flashing brightly like lightning coming out of them. This was a supernatural, glorious light that celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Jesus has conquered darkness and shines far greater than any angel ever could. God the Father never said to any of the angels, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father and the angels are his ministering spirits sent to those who will inherit salvation. It is an awesome fact. It is awesome to think that the very angels in heaven were influential in your conversion to the Lord Jesus Christ. The two Marys would inherit salvation. They must have been completely overwhelmed at what they were seeing. And they remain standing. The Roman guards Trained, killing machines have fallen to the ground like a dead man. And yet the two ladies are still standing up. The men are completely powerless. Mighty, military men guarding a resurrected, life-giving, yesi Christ, Jesus Christ. You can see the irony here. These guards when they came around, must have been completely discombobulated, in a complete state of bumfuzzer. Great words meaning confused. They were confused, trying to take it all in. The earthquake, the angels, the glorious light, the missing Lord Jesus Christ from the tomb. They had just witnessed the power of the resurrection. And the incredible thing is, in all of this activity, nobody sees Jesus leave the tomb. Jesus had left the building and no one had seen him leave. You do, be, partly because you don't want to stay dead longer than you have to. I'm not planning to stay dead longer than I have to. I'm going to be more alive than I've ever been when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. And I am so looking forward to it. You see, the stone was rolled away so we can look inside the tomb and see that it is empty. Jesus Christ of Nazareth has left the tomb. The angels tell the ladies not to be afraid. I'm so glad the angels say, don't be afraid. 
Their world has just been turned upside down. The angels, they give a tour of the tomb, proving that Jesus' body is not there. The angels are showing the good news. They're sharing the good news. Jesus Christ was physically crucified and now has been physically resurrected. The Marys saw an empty tomb that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. He can now have his tomb back and use it for when it is his time to fall asleep. Because Jesus will never ever need a tomb again. Jesus will never ever die ever again. Therefore, the angel tells the Marys, the ladies, he tells them to go to the disciples and say he is risen from the dead. He's going to Galilee. The angels have just confirmed what Jesus had said to the disciples way back in Matthew 26, verse 32. After the disciples had stumbled, after they had hidden in fear, after they had denied the Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew 26, 32 says, But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. The angels are telling the ladies to tell the disciples what Jesus had already told them. The disciples had fled, the disciples had hid, and Jesus still wants to meet with them. If you're watching this and if you've denied the Lord, if you have turned your back on the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, I've got good news for you. He still wants to meet with you. Where is your Galilee? Where are you going to meet with the risen Lord Jesus Christ? He's there with open arms and he's calling you back to himself. He's calling you, calling you, calling your name. Calling you back to himself. Don't keep running from Jesus Christ. He's coming back physically, you know, for his saints, for his church. Are you ready to meet with the Lord? Are you serving him? Are you working while it's still daylight? Before it is too dark and no man can work? Are you labouring in well-doing before the Lord? persevering, pressing on. And we do it all because Christ is risen from the dead and he's coming back. And even if we've denied him, turned our backs on him, doesn't matter what we've done, what we've said or where we've been, he is there with unconditional grace. He is quick to forgive. He is quick to restore. He restores Peter who had denied him three times before the cockerel, the rooster had crowed that night. And why does Jesus want to meet as well with his disciples? Yes, to restore them, but also to celebrate. Having breakfast. They're celebrating because death has been conquered. Sin has been conquered. The devil himself has been defeated and has been conquered. It is a reunion of celebration at breakfast on the shores of Galilee. Jesus invites you to have breakfast. You see, the last meal they had together was supper. It was the last supper in the upper room. But now it was breakfast at Galilee. It was a new day. It was a fresh start. It was a new beginning. And the disciples would be sent out on a new adventure of faith. You know, they had to go and, and wait there in Jerusalem for the promise of the Holy Spirit. They were going to get baptised with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need the fire of God back in our pulpits, back in our churches. And Jesus has risen and he is keen to send the fire and the Holy Spirit into our hearts so that our hearts may burn with passion and zeal for the King of Kings. But you know, the Roman soldiers, 
In Matthew 28, 11 to 15, those Roman guards, they are bribed. They were given money to keep quiet about the resurrection. But guess what? Nothing was going to keep the followers of Jesus quiet because Jesus is out of the tomb. You can't keep a good man down. You can't keep the Son of God down. Jesus, he is alive forevermore. The King of glory has risen and he meets us at Galilee because he wants to restore and to celebrate his victory. Is the victory of Christ active in your lives? Are you following the Lord Jesus wherever he leads you? He may lead you to Thailand. He may lead you to the Philippines. He may lead you to Bangkok. He may lead you to Aberfan or Pensacola. He may lead you wherever he leads you. Will you follow? Will you go? The disciples after meeting with Jesus couldn't keep quiet. They had to go into all the world. Make disciples. Baptising people as they went. Spreading the glorious news. Jesus is back from the dead. He is risen my friends. I pray that you come to know this personally. And deep within your hearts. Christ is risen physically from the dead. And one day he's coming back in the twinkling of an eye to take his loved ones home. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we bless you and we exalt you. We thank you for the power of the resurrection that Jesus has conquered death. We thank you that the resurrection power of Jesus can live within us. We pray, Lord, for a great filling of the Holy Spirit. And we would know the joy and the delight and the awesomeness of what it is to walk with the Lord Jesus. And to have him lead us by the hand to fully restore us for active service to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, let your Holy Spirit fill our homes, fill our hearts and save the unconverted in Jesus' name. Amen.